Hello, beautiful internet family. Dan here from DanceTube.tv. And if you're new around these parts, then you can expect brutally honest tech reviews on the channel. So make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell to keep up to date with the latest and greatest in the tech space. And in today's video, I've got my full review on the DJI Pocket 2. Now this is an all-in-one camera system that features a three-axis stabilized camera. It's capable of shooting 4K at 60 frames per second, and it is a very impressive piece of hardware. The engineering that's gone into this product and the original Osmo Pocket is still, to this day, mind-boggling. It's a beautiful combination of hardware and software working together to create a seamless experience that has never let me down. So I do have a lot of content on the original Osmo Pocket on my channel. I'll have some links in the description below to check that out, as well as some interactive cards that will just kind of pop up on the screen throughout the video. Definitely check those out, as I think the Osmo Pocket is still one of the greatest all-in-one camera systems on the market, especially at that price point. So at the moment, the original Osmo Pocket and the DJI Pocket 2 are both $599 in the DJI store. So I will actually have some links in the description below to check out the Pocket 2 and the Osmo Pocket in the DJI store as well as on Amazon. So check those out if you are interested. But I guess them being the same price, one of the big questions is, should someone who owns the original Osmo Pocket, like myself, should they upgrade to the Pocket 2? Is it worth the upgrade? That's probably one of the pressing kind of questions that I've been getting quite a lot. And then I get a lot of questions from people who are at different stages of their kind of camera development, I guess you could call it. So people who either own a camera that's not flash, it's not great, and they're not really liking it. It's lacking in features, it's not capturing crisp video or photos, and they're not loving it. And it's kind of that barrier. It's stopping them from wanting to film more. It's stopping them from wanting to go out and take photos. So those people are asking, should I upgrade? Should I get myself a Pocket 2? And then you've got people who have never owned a camera before. They're wondering, is this a good kind of entry camera? Is this a good starting point for me? You know, you've got people who might be wanting to buy a gift for someone. And they're wondering, is this a good gift? You know, if you've got the money to buy it, what a fantastic gift. Like, yes, please, if you want to give me that gift, I, I would really love that. I appreciate that, guys. But, you know, there's a lot of different questions. A lot of people at different stages and that's kind of what I want to focus on in this video. I want to try to cover those questions and try to really touch on who this camera's for and whether this is worth your money. So like I said before, this camera is an upgrade. The Pocket 2 is an upgrade from the original Osmo Pocket. I think it's a no-brainer. If you haven't owned a camera and you're thinking about buying one of the two, you might as well just get the Pocket 2. They're the same price and the Pocket 2 offers a more advanced stereo uh, system which is they've called DJI matrix stereo so a better recording capability it also has high quality images and active track 3.0 which is an upgrade over just the active track that was on Osmo pocket so it's an upgrade you know it's got a few additional features that you will not have on the Osmo pocket so for the same price you might as well get the pocket 2 that's a no-brainer so now when it comes to what's different from the pocket 2 to the original Osmo Pocket, they're very similar. They've got that same amazing form factor that still to this day blows my mind. It's such a remarkable piece of engineering, such a beautiful all-in-one camera system. They're both extremely lightweight. The Pocket 2 is one gram heavier. <laughs> so that's crazy. They're both very similar in terms of their dimensions, their weight, and just the overall appeal, the overall aesthetic. They're both pretty much identical in that regard. I'd love to know in the comments below, like, what are your thoughts? Is this usable audio? Is this something that you would use for your own vlogging setup? You know, if it's not high quality enough, I'd love to know, like, what system are you using already? What microphone are you using? What camera are you using? Because, you know, it depends what boat you're in. If you're starting out in the vlogging space, you know, the barrier to entry, you, you want to make that the easiest barrier to entry possible. You don't want to make it a cumbersome gimbal system and then you gotta figure out what mic to use and what gimbal to use and what camera to use and it makes it so overwhelming that a lot of people just won't even bother doing it. And that's the problem. Like people won't start the vlogging process because there's too many steps, there's too many hurdles to jump through. But if it's as simple as powering on a camera system like the Pocket 2 and then just talking to the camera, if it's that easy, then a lot more people are going to be vlogging. A lot more people are going to want to get into the creative film space. And 
To me, that's a massive positive. Now, when it comes to the actual camera system, when it comes to the sensor and the lens, they do differ quite a lot here. So you've got the Pocket 2 that has a 1 over 1.7 inch CMOS sensor, and then the original Osmo Pocket has a 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor. I was expecting a lot more from the Pocket 2. I loved the original Osmo Pocket, and it's always so hard for any company to live up to the hype of such a popular, revolutionary product. The Osmo Pocket had never been done before. It had never been seen before. It was ridiculous. It still, to this day, is mind-boggling. It's amazing what they've been able to do there. So to try to live up to that expectation is ridiculous. You can't drastically change it because then people will hate it. But you try to keep that same form factor, that same kind of appeal that everyone loved, but you're trying to slightly improve it without drastically changing it. And that's that fine balance. And I do not envy the people that have to make the changes. You know, if you own the original Osmo Pocket, in my opinion, I don't think you should upgrade. There's no reason why you would be spending that amount of money to get such an incremental upgrade. Now, if you really want some of the audio functionality, if you want some of the accessories, and if you want like a slightly improved sensor and camera capabilities, then sure, maybe sell your original Osmo Pocket and get yourself a Pocket 2, but you've got no reason to have both of them. And honestly, there's no real major reason why you would be upgrading here. It's such a small upgrade. One addition to the Pocket 2 that is actually really welcomed on this new device is the addition of a brand new joystick. And that allows us now to have a full range of motion of the camera. We can control exactly where it's looking, where the original Osmo Pocket had very limited range of motion using that old joystick. So I think this is a really important thing. They've addressed the issue that we all had and they've given us a proper joystick now where we have a full range of motion with the camera. So that's amazing. And you can also use the digital zoom feature, which again is not available on the Pocket, but is available on the Pocket 2. It's kind of just an additional offering that they're saying, hey, we also have zoom now, but it's digital zoom, not optical zoom. So using the zoom, you're going to be losing so much quality and it really defeats the purpose of using it. Like if you're gonna lose that quality, why would you be using it? You might as well just walk closer to a subject. I mean, it could be okay if you have no physical way of getting there and there's something really exciting going on and you have to get that footage, then sure, use the digital zoom. But in terms of an actual practical implementation of it, it's really not great. It's losing a lot of quality and it really is just a gimmick. So that's something that they've added as an additional offering, like, hey guys, we now have Zoom, but it's not really something you're gonna to wanna to use. When you look at the Osmo Pocket and the Pocket 2, there are no major differences in terms of the form factor and the overall aesthetic. They both look pretty much identical. One of the biggest changes though on the Pocket 2 is that it now features four in-house, onboard, microphones. You have DJI Matrix Stereo. So you've got a microphone on the front, the rear, and then two on the side, creating this Matrix Stereo that they have heavily advertised in the campaign. That was kind of their biggest push with the Pocket 2. And that's great because that's one of the biggest concerns with the original Pocket. They're trying to address the problems with the audio quality from the original Osmo Pocket. And now when it comes to some of the other features that aren't available on the Osmo Pocket, the Pocket 2 has a few others. Again, it's very lackluster and there's nothing significantly different here. But one of the big changes is that we can now shoot HDR video. So we can shoot up to 2.7K at 30 frames per second. That's something you just did not have on the Osmo Pocket. So if you really love HDR video, then you can use that on the Pocket 2. Another thing is that you can now shoot slow motion video at 1080p up to 240 frames per second. So you can now go eight times slow-mo instead of the four times slow-mo that we had on the Osmo Pocket. So again, if you really, really love slow motion, you've got a slight improvement in the Pocket 2, but just a slight improvement, nothing major, nothing ridiculously big that is really putting everything on the table, you know? Like it's such an incremental upgrade here. And that's kind of been the theme throughout my tests with the Pocket 2. It's something that just hasn't exceeded my expectations, you know? Like when I checked out the Osmo Pocket, it was revolutionary. Previously, gimbals were large, cumbersome things that you had to calibrate and get to a particular weight point. You have to collapse it down and then put it all together when you wanna use your camera again on a gimbal. It was just this crazy process that is so awkward. Gimbals are also very heavy as well. And to be able to have a 4K camera, a very capable 4K camera that you can power on within a few seconds and have three axis stabilized footage, 
that was revolutionary. And to be able to exceed that, to be able to improve on that is obviously such a hard task. If it's your first time, if it's a gift, this is probably the camera you want. This is the thing that you need in your life if you want to get excited about film again, if you want to get excited about um, you know, going out, taking lots of video, taking lots of photos. This is something that's just so easy to put in your pocket, take out of your pocket, power it on and get really usable footage within a few seconds. It's amazing in that regard. It's also a really good B-roll camera. So if you've got another high-end camera that you use to get some vlogging stuff or you know whatever you're doing, whatever space you're in, the Pocket is a really nice addition to your library of camera systems. It's something that would be extremely capable of adding a nice edge to your B-roll. And I think it's just something that if you haven't used it before, it's amazing. If you can go into a store, if you can go into like a DJI store or another camera store and get your hands on it and actually get a chance to use it before you buy it, I think that's a really good opportunity to see what this is capable of. And it will kind of let you see what the camera system's like. It will let you see the features and it will kind of give you an idea of how you could use this in your space, in your world. Um, because again, a lot of this is talk. A lot of this is just checking out some video, some B-roll, seeing what it looks like. It's a completely different experience when you get it in your hand. So I think that's my recommendation. This isn't a cheap camera system. So if you can do that, definitely get your hands on it first. That being said though, my review and my comparison is based purely on just the two devices, the Osmo Pocket and the Pocket 2. I haven't actually checked out the Creator Combo and that's a few hundred dollars more, but it features a, a slew, a whole array of different accessories, and it also includes that wireless microphone setup. So in that case, that could actually answer all of your dreams. It could be the perfect vlogging setup with that wireless microphone setup. But again, I haven't used that, so I can't say whether it's actually worth the extra money. Um, this comparison here was purely just the two devices on their own, standalone. Um, so yeah, if anyone else has actually got the Creator Combo, definitely let us know in the comments below whether it's worth that extra couple hundred bucks to get yourself all of those accessories. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this review. Uh, I'd love to see you in some future videos in the comments section. I'll have some more content coming to the channel very soon. So make sure to have a fantastic day. I love you all and peace out.